Uh, good example, uh, once again. We have just looked at Unit 4, and now let us look at Unit 5, that's on the role of infrastructure in managing water resources. So um, we're basically going to look at how exactly um, infrastructures like um, drainage system, infrastructures like irrigation systems and other hydraulics are actually um, making differences in managing water resources. So there are three things to look at in this unit. The first one is to look at uh, the drainage as one of the means to uh, manage the water. Uh, the second one is to look at the catchment development as one of the uh, infrastructure's role in uh, managing water resources. And third one is to look at irrigation and other uh, relevant uh, hydraulic systems around the world which are unique but are commonly used. So let us look at these three things. So towards the end of the uh, unit, you should be able to um, get uh, get uh, a good firm grip of these three things. First one is looking at the drainage and conservation. Second one is looking at the catchment development. And the third one is looking at the irrigation, different kinds of irrigation methods and other, other hydraulic uh, designs. So let us look at uh, the three one by one. So first let us look at the importance of uh, drainage system and um, catchment areas in order to uh, manage water resources. So, uh, when we are talking about uh, catchment, when we are talking about uh, watersheds, we are mainly talking about um, water, air, and soil. And we are, ev we are even looking at uh, the human dimension uh, and interaction of that human dimension with the, the ecosystem or the natural environment. So, in that kind of scenario where we have uh, ecosystem, environment, and all, and uh, we're looking mainly at one of the components, we're looking mainly at water. Second component is we're looking mainly at air. And third component that we are looking mainly at is soil. So a perfect or a superior uh, water management uh, program or activities mainly looks at balancing the three uh, fundamental uh, elements, water, air, and soil. And when we are balancing water here in soil, in an environment, or let's say in a field where we have got huge crops, these are these crops are going to uh, express their full genetic potential because that plants or that crops are going to get full access to water, air, and the soil. So the main difference that we see. Uh, uh, over the yields of the crop, like uh, there are poor yields, there are average yield, and there are record breaking yields. The main difference is because the main difference is due to only and only due to the amount and timing of the soil's water supply. So, if you do not have a very good water supply, then I think uh, uh, the kind of yield that our crop uh, gets is is going to be different than. Uh, uh, the situation when our crops are getting a good amount of uh, water. So water is very important in uh, expression of uh, genetic potential of any crops, any plants. And um, it's very important to improve the water management uh, to increase the crop yield. So there are different water management techniques that we just uh, saw till unit uh, four. All the techniques can be utilized even in the natural environment to increase the yield of any plants or any crop. So let us look at um, uh, catchment development. So catchment is uh, is anything that uh, is comprised mainly of uh, um, land, you see. And this land, uh, because the boundary of the land is such that uh, it's not flat. We will not see any land around the world as a very flat, but um, uh, we see that the contours of the lands are not in level. So uh, in such cases, um, we get ridges, we get some plains, and those ridges are basically uh, catching the water that falling on that ridge and bringing that water to one uh, common point. Uh, 
Um, and uh, as long as uh, it fulfills the definition of uh, catching the water from the highest point and taking down towards the creeks, towards the gorges, towards the valleys where we have got uh, streams, river, lake, even draining to a ground groundwater system and even ultimately draining to the ocean. So this system which catches the water and ultimately uh, drains to a single point of runoff water or groundwater system, that's what catchment area is all about. And sometimes catchment area is also known as watershed and the boundary can be called as catchment boundary or watershed boundary. Um, the important thing that we are or we should not be missing is the coexistence of uh, natural and human uh, system in the watershed system. So catchment or watersheds mainly looks at the land that that area has, the water system that area has, uh, plants and animals that water system has, the natural environment that what that system has. And uh, when we're looking at a village settled in that area so uh, human system should also be considered because humans are uh, the one uh, which uses or who uses uh, the water and other systems of the catchment and they are the one who will exploit as well as who should be conserving who should be managing that catchment area so please do not forget that one and uh, catchment is considered as one of the most effective uh, management units for conservation of both quality as well as quantity of water. So the better you uh, try to manage the catchment, the better the quantity as well as quality of water you should be getting from that. And um, uh, it's said that a, catch, uh, a catchment is home to a complete water cycle system. And in order to manage these systems for a healthy future, you must learn to catch, conserve, and make wise use of all water in that system. So what are we basically doing till now is that we are basically trying to just shed the water. Meaning we are just trying to just use the water that a catchment is giving to us. But a good water management practice always aims not only to shed the water or use the water or in waste, waste the water, but it's, it always a good water management technique tries to also catch, conserve, and make a better wise use of water, water uh, uh, resources in that area. So uh, there are lots of uh, benefits of uh, 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 managing catchment area. So uh, the main objective of uh, catchment area development that we need to know is that uh, the catchment area development is done to make uh, usage of land which is not in use. Uh, when we are developing catchment, we need to uh, use those uh, barren lands which are not uh, being used. So we try to uh, do afforestation, reforestation. We try to do lots of plantation in order to, in our, our soils to be fertile, in order for our soils to increase the retention of the water. Um, catchment area development again looks at uh, stopping uh, soil erosion. It tries to maximize the storage of rainwater uh, system. Uh, it tries to bring a maximum amount of uh, area under irrigation. It promotes plantation over barren lands, like I said, and it tries to, or it aims to make available drinking water for all the people residing in that catchment area. So uh, the benefits of uh, healthy catchment area or uh, healthy catchment is uh, if we have a very healthy catchment, then we will have a very good source of uh, clean drinking water. We, sh we should be getting unspoiled uh, natural areas for recreation, very aesthetically beautiful. For example, a very uh, well-managed catchment area like Pobjika or Gandhi Pobji area it's one of the most uh, beautiful place, aesthetically uh, uh, beautiful area, uh, which is not spoiled. So uh, uh, that's also a sign of a very healthy catchment area. It provides habitats for plants and animals, 
healthy vegetation and waterways, reliable and clean water for stock and irrigation, opportunities for sustainable uh, agriculture and industry. So, uh, what exactly can we do in order to develop uh, catchment? So, like I said in the earlier, earlier classes, what, uh, the different, different kinds of uh, conservation uh, measures and techniques, like uh, uh, developing contours, contours in uh, in uh, in areas where you have got uh, no leveled places. For example, uh, you feel that those area in areas where uh, uh, you have got very steep slopes and if you do not construct contours, water is going to flow out of that uh, steep slope. So in order to uh, conserve water in that steep slope, we try to build uh, contours, we try to make terraces of those steep slopes. That kind of uh, uh, measures can be done. We can develop a small check dams, small dams. We can uh, construct a small lakes. Um, we can construct burn, and uh, we can do uh, the least that we can do is we can do plantation of uh, trees. Um, other things like I've shared in the other classes are like crop pattern. Uh, we can have different kinds of crop patterns like intercropping, multiple cropping. We can have uh, uh, crop pattern plantation on the slopes and uh, uh, these ultimately are going to uh, control water flow and floods and increase moisture of the soil. So those are a uh, few things that can be done in catchment development. So uh, whatever conservation techniques and measures that we have learned in earlier classes are no different than to apply here. So all those techniques can be applied in catchment development as well. So one of the uh, good effect of or one of the positive impacts of uh, healthy catchment uh, areas, the benefits that it's going to bring to the quality and quantity of the water, which ultimately is going to uh, bring uh, benefits to the livelihoods of people living in that catchment area. So, uh, good water management measures uh, in any places like catchment or in other places mainly includes uh, uh, draining waterlogged soil. So, uh, water, uh, irrigating water, irrigating maximum amount of water or a huge quantity of water every time to that land is also not very good because uh, if this irrigation, this irrigated area, if they get waterlogged and uh, if the water is not being reduced or removed from uh, those waterlogged area, then it's ultimately going to uh, uh, ultimately going to uh, leach the nutrients from the root of the uh, plants. It will uh, uh, it will accelerate uh, the the decay and uh, rotting of the roots. So uh, draining of waterlogged soils is very important. Second one is making more effective use of uh, water holding capacity of soils so that crops will not grow during periods of insufficient rainfall. So, uh, we can always increase the efficiency of, uh, efficiency of uh, soil. So, uh, soil organic mass is uh, mass where we have got huge organic materials like humus, decades, uh, leaf leaders and all. So, uh, scientifically it's proven that if you increase 1% of soil organic matter, SOM, in one acre of our land, um, the water holding capacity of the roots in that soil is going to increase by 20,000 gallons of water. So that's quite huge. Just 1% increase in the soil organic matter in that soil is going to increase the water holding capacity or water retention capacity of the roots by 20,000 uh, gallons of water. So that's quite huge. So it's very important for us to uh, make soil very fertile, uh, make soil rich in uh, soil organic matter in order for us to uh, increase the uh, capacity of water retention uh, of the soils. So increasing 
the soil's ability to absorb moisture and conduct it down to the soil profile, reducing water loss from the soil surface by uh, uh, by techniques like uh, mulching can really help to conserve uh, wa water and manage water uh, properly and irrigating soils with uh, low water holding capacity and and uh, these days we have got uh, uh, with uh, scientific uh, interventions we have um, uh, sensors which can uh, which can sense or which can measure the water humidity or water content in a soil so it's very important to uh, get those kind of uh, technological instruments to uh, measure water so that uh, if you measure the what if you measure water uh, or humidity level in the soil and if you feel that the soil has a bowl of water you should not be wasting water there if you feel that that soil has no water it's uh, very important to uh, water those soil so uh, Sensors are a very important tool to check water, so try to again uh, incorporate sensors in uh, water management measures. So let us talk not about all the things like uh, how to increase the uh, water, retention, water retention capacity of the soil, how to conserve water by conserving or by better managing soil. Let us just look at the first and foremost draining waterlogged soil as one of the uh, measures to uh, increase uh, the water resources. Um, we're not going to look at all those things because all those things are just a repetition. So, um, draining of uh, water from a waterlogged area is very important because um, a water is a commodity. If, is, if it is less in a soil, it's going to create problem. If it is more in the soil, it's going to again create problem. So, right now, uh, uh, we just saw how to um, uh, increase from point number two to point number five is all about increasing the water or water retention capacity in the soil. So point number one is mainly to looking at the other side of the water where we have got huge amount of water in the soil. So huge amount of water in the soil is not very good for soil because of uh, reasons like it is going to leach the nutrients from the roots. It's going to uh, uh, make the roots rot. It's also going to uh, uh, it's also going to uh, limit the oxygen available to the plants uh, if you have excess excess water. So uh, excess water is not good. So it's very important for us to take out the water from that area, and that water can be used by other areas where we have got insufficient amount of water. So it's very important to have a good drainage system. So uh, like I said, uh, there are, are benefits of uh, taking out water from the, taking out excessive water from the soil because uh, if you have got excessive water in the soil, uh, uh, all the factors that we just, uh, uh, we just uh, uh, looked at right now, uh, like a uh, huge amount of water is going to uh, leach the nutrients from the root, huge amount of water is going to make the oxygen limited, huge amount of water is going to make the root rot uh, easily. So those kind of things can be avoided if we are draining out the water. So removing excess water from root zone is an important first step to uh, good water management program. Uh, a very good drainage system is the one where uh, 12 inches of water is being uh, uh, removed from water table within a span of 24 hours or 21 inches of water is being reduced from the uh, water table in a span of uh, 48 hours. So uh, a drainage system is very important because without a drainage system the water locked in the soil the soil having excess water cannot go out without a proper drainage system. So drainage system should be uh, placed and the drainage system should have the ability to at least take out 12 inches of water from uh, the soil surface uh, by 24 hours. So the overall benefits of uh, 
uh, drainage system is that if you have got a very good drainage system, the soil will get good aeration because huge amount of uh, oxygen is being lost if the water is continuously locked in that area. So better soil aeration, uh, more timely field operation can be done because in a very muddy, in a very waterlogged area, field operations are very difficult to do. Less flooding in low areas, uh, higher soil temperature can be maintained because water can always, water is something that has high specific heat capacity like we just looked at in one of our first classes. So uh, if you remove water, then the temperature can uh, increase and the soil can also have higher uh, temperature and uh, higher soil temperature is good for uh, plants because uh, uh, colder temperature can kill the plants so sometimes higher temperature is needed for the plants so removal of excess water helps to uh, regain the uh, soil temperature uh, less uh, surface runoff than better soil structure um, less more of water in that area can can lead to have a very good soil structure uh, better root development because um, uh, like I said huge uh, amount of water in that uh, soil can always lead to leaching of nutrients from the roots so better root development uh, high yields and improve uh, crop uh, quality so uh, these, these are the overview or overall benefits of a good drainage system. A drainage system can be classified into uh, surface drainage, subsurface drainage and a combination of both. So drainage system can be on the surface like whatever we are seeing over in our country. Those drainage systems are all uh, on the surface like these ones. We have got drainage system on the surface. Some drainage systems are constructed below the surface through a small tunnel or a small uh, uh, pipe like structure mainly to drain out water but not disturb the uh, surface uh, agricultural land or field or area and sometimes we can have both combination of uh, uh, surface as well as uh, subsurface uh, drainage system in just one uh, area or one agricultural field or one, uh, one land. So um, the main uh, uh, application of or uh, the selection of drainage system that you want to uh, use again depends on the, the budget, the financial uh, resources that you have. So uh, surface drainage is quite uh, cheaper compared to uh, subsurface drainage because in subsurface drainage you need to dig a lot, you need to place pipes, you need to place uh, your drains properly and then you need to again cover those uh, drain, drain system and, uh, and lots of works are uh, to be done in subsurface drain system. So economically, uh, speaking economically, it's a little bit expensive compared to uh, surface drain system. But if you look at the efficiency, subsurface drain system is very efficient than surface drain system because um, uh, it's not wasting the agricultural land that you can use on the surface. Um, just to talk on the different kinds of uh, surface drainage, there are lots of different kinds of surface drainage, but the most commonly uh, found uh, surface drainage system are random ditches and parallel di ditches. So, random ditches are uh, constructed to uh, constructed to uh, uh, ditches. Uh, placing uh, ditches placed uh, in areas where we have got waterlogged areas. For example, uh, these blue ones are the waterlogged in these fields. So you want to construct your, the lateral ditches. I mean, the, these are called as, called as the main ditches. A main, you can call these ditches as the main channel or main ditch. And these are called as lateral ditches. So, uh, the the lateral uh, lateral ditches can be uh, constructed in such a way that it connects uh, with the it connects with the the waterlogged areas over there. So uh, random placement of uh, ditches wherever waterlogs are there. So these are random ditches. 
The other one is parallel ditches where um, we have uh, a very systematic uh, layout of our ditches, very parallel in form. So these are uh, these are the surface drainage system commonly used. So ultimately, it has to um, connect with the main ditch or main channel or outlet channel. All right. Then we have got subsurface uh, drainage. Um, Subsurface drainage, like I said, is a drainage system uh, made underneath the surface or underneath the land. Land. So we have got four commonly used subsurface drainage. So one is again a random pattern uh, where uh, uh, the lateral uh, ditches are or the or the lateral drains or ditches are constructed wherever you have got water logging uh, happening. And these are being uh, these are being connected to the sub mains and main, and ultimately uh, to the streams and the rivers. Uh, then we have got herringbone, where uh, the ditches looks like the lateral uh, ditches connects to the main uh, drain, and it looks like a V-shaped herringbone. So uh, this is called as herringbone pattern uh, subsurface drainage system. The other one is again a parallel pattern, uh, systematic outlay of the lateral as well as main ditches and the last one is um, a double main pattern exactly like a parallel pattern but two parallel uh, pattern uh, subsurface drainage system combines together and uh, uh, and it uh, uh, joins uh, in surface uh, waterways uh, in between so these are four mostly uh, most commonly used uh, subsurface uh, drainage system so that's it on uh, <clears throat> on drainage system and uh, the first uh, part of the lecture of this unit thank you so much